Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Anseba in Eritrea. Eritrea is a little country in the Horn of Africa region along the Red Sea, you can see here. But Anseba does not have a coastline. It borders Sudan up here. It is all entirely inland. It is just north of the capital city of Asmara. Asmara is the largest city in Eritrea. The second largest is Karen. You can see up here the capital of Anseba as well. Anseba is named after the Anseba River that flows through Karen. But this area actually has lots of other rivers as well. They are just not like river rivers. Like when you think of a river, you think of like rushing rapids, you know. Not like that. We are in the Sahel region of Africa, which is the region just south of the Sahara. So it still has some Sahara elements in that. It's very dry and very rocky, but with a lot more life than the Sahara has, because we're about to enter the uh, more lusher regions of Central Africa. But we're not quite there in Eritrea. It's still very this is also technically part of the East African Rift, where the continental plate is splitting right about here. This area here, in whatever millions and millions of years, is going to break off from the continent. So as it's doing that, it's creating this very interesting, rocky, dry landscape all around it as the rocks split apart. So we see that a bit around here in Eritrea, where it's lots of interesting plateaus and the rivers creating interesting little valleys and things. There's also a lot of wildlife here. There's some painted dog reserve areas and um, lots of scrubby plant life and birds and there are some wildlife regions in the north here that are preserved. Uh, but when I pull up my Google Earth, sadly, there's no pictures of it. You just have to take my word for it. It's all very lovely. I'll show you what I can after we talk about the history of this corner of Eritrea. Because Eritrea has had a very long and turbulent history. We're actually a very new country compared to So, the city of Karen here has existed for quite a long time. I'm not sure if we even know exactly when it was founded, but it was a trading port, mainly because up here you have Egypt, and down here you have Amhara and Tigray in what's now Ethiopia. Lots of very powerful civilizations kind of all around it. And they could meet here and trade to the Red Sea coast and the major cities around the Red Sea coast. So it was a trading center for a long, long time getting goods to and from all of these big important places in Africa and I assume the Arabian Peninsula. And it sort of just stayed that way for quite a while. The Italians were the first kind of outside people to have an interest in it. Not just Europeans, but I think anyone outside of the Horn of Africa. The missionaries arrived in 1851, but it was a bit of a flop. Um, Italy was going through a lot at the time, and they didn't really have money and resources to pass out to missionaries in Africa, so 
the mission there, the mission collapsed and the local peoples overran it and um, did some very unrelaxing things to the converts there. It was just a little moment where Europe tried to encroach in Karen and they did not last, but uh, they would be back. In 1872, the area was conquered by Egypt. Egypt tried to implement modernization, as modern as 1872 was. And people emigrated from Egypt and other, I believe, other Arab places to this area here since it was growing, and they welcomed back the Christian missionaries as well they had to take to was much more successful. In the year 1885, Egypt and Ethiopia was at war. The Ethiopians conquered this area. And then the Italians would come and conquer what they could of Ethiopia in 1890. So the Italians took over pretty much the entirety of what's now Eritrea. And they brought even more modernization. They built railroads, beautiful, beautiful Art Deco buildings and cinemas and um, places to buy Italian cars and stuff. Really beautiful buildings, mostly in Asmara, but there's some in Karen. There was a huge battle here in Karen during World War II in 1941. The British came in and attacked the, uh, the fascist Italy colony here. Italian colony here at one and took it over for a moment. I was eventually given back to Ethiopia once the dust settled in Ethiopia. But a huge independence movement sprung up in Eritrea in 1961, wanting to be independent from the rest of Ethiopia for a variety of reasons, mainly because Ethiopia's government was uh, going through a lot of changes. Um, I mean, I guess some good, but mostly bad, that Eritrea didn't want any part of. They tried to break off, and it was a very, very violent war, and there were lots of conflicts and fighting in the region that didn't care. But that ended in 1991, and Eritrea became independent. And that's pretty much all the news that I found. The news, all the history that I found. It's just this area up here. So let me show you what it looks like on Google Earth. There we go. So, there's Aunt Seba. I'm gonna start off by zooming out. You can see exactly where Eritrea is located. So here's the African continent, you can see the Red Sea, the Arabian Peninsula, the Eritrea is here along the coast, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Sudan, surrounding it. So here's Anseba, let's look at the slideshow here. You can see some of what Karen looks like. Quaint little houses there. Beautiful rocks there as well. Little church. And some of the green. Apparently, this area was extremely, extremely forested uh, in the early 20th century. And most of the trees were cut there when they got their dark. Little village there. It looks like they're sleuthing, right? Sleuth, sleuth, sleuth. Something there for something. But yeah, there's some lovely little areas of greenery, but for the most part, it is a vast desert region. As you can see from up here, you can really see just how rocky it is. And if I zoom out even more, you can see the East African Rift splitting right there and creating all of this like aftermath from the split right there creates lots of cool lakes and things down here. So I wonder if in like a couple hundred years 
this area will look like this area as it continues to split. I don't know. I'll have to find out. Not that any of us will be here for that. But I wonder. So yes, look how rocky and bare this area is. Here you can see the wildlife reserve. Again, there's no pictures of it, which is really disappointing. see the little towns. You can see the rivers here. Down here, you can see there's above. Very big sprawling region. Considering this is like a, a dry desert area, that's a pretty big community. A big suburb of Esmer. I like that there's a big hill in the middle, and that's where their city hall is. I wonder if it's a 3D. Yeah, you can kind of see. It's a good place for a city hall, the big hill in the middle of town. There's the Ansepo River, where this area gets its name from. And I also tried combing through here, trying to show you guys some cool things. You can just see a bunch of churches. I wonder just how much is... Um... Here, I'll show you. How much is, like, Western Christianity, and how much is Tewahedo, Ethiopian Orthodox style? Let me see, I think in this slideshow there's some cool pictures of some churches. Yeah, see, now this, to me, looks more like a Western style church, right? And this looks a little more Ethiopian style. You can see the juxtaposition, right? You'd see this, you would see somewhere in like Western Europe. This, you would see somewhere in like Ethiopia, Somalia, kind of like that. So I wonder, like, I should have looked up what the denominations were. Little football pitch here. Yeah, very interesting. And then you can see minarets there, the mosque. But yeah, this one looks much more Ethiopian to me. And then next to it you have the more Western. So I don't know. That's a mosque for sure. And there's the, the soccer pitch. The football pitch, I suppose. But anyway. Let's see if there's a picture here. Nope. Yeah, I tried you guys to find you guys some cool stuff. I got nothing for you. There's lots of little villages here, and obviously there's no pictures there because people aren't going around to tiny villages in Eritrea taking photos for Google Earth, right? So I am going to end it there for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this style of video, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series in my channel. Next, we are going to go to a place where there's so many photos. I have to pick and choose which ones to show you. There's so many places. And uh, it's one of the most beautiful towns in Turkey. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Turkey videos are always fun. I have so many Turkish viewers who are so kind. Most of you are kind. Um, so I'm looking forward. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. I hope that you have a good